Oh hey guys, this is Gillette with ballooncoach.com and today I am so excited that Peggy Williams is providing this free webinar on how to create a balloon decor wreath. Peggy Williams was one of my first instructors in the balloon industry. I started in 2003 and in 2004 I traveled down to South Florida and went to a training there where Peggy and several other amazing people were um, teaching us about balloon decor. And I will never forget that moment because it was one of those events where everybody who was attending was local and they left the hotel after the training. And the only people sitting in the restaurant that evening were the instructors. So I walked up to them and I asked permission to talk to them because I could tell they were old friends, that they were having a great conversation and I didn't want to interrupt. And it was my first experience with the balloon industry and how welcoming they are. They treated me like family and they're like, pull up a chair, come hang out with us, come learn from us, ask us what you want. And it was the most amazing evening because I learned so much listening to Peggy and her friends talk about their life experiences together and the things that they had experienced from conferences and just growing together as business professionals. And honestly, that is what got me totally hooked on loving the balloon industry was how welcoming they were and the wealth of information that I got from there. So Peggy Williams, if you have not met her yet, she is currently the Director of Marketing and Education at ENR Sales. And I always talk about how I support balloon distributors in the world who support the industry. And ENR Sales is one of those distributors who gives back and sponsors education. And then they send Peggy out, and she's doing things like this today to give you the training you need to work confidently with foils and to create the design she's saying. So I want to say thank you to uh, Ian, our sales for having Peggy do this. Peggy is the one on the far left then Cody Williams in the middle and then Wesley over in the right. And Wesley is one of the reps at Ian, our sales who handles accounts like Cody Williams to help us as balloon professionals get the services that we need. So that's the thing is I want to put that face to the distributors. Our distributors around the world, most of them are family owned. And so supporting people like ENR Sales, rather than just going to Amazon to buy your balloons, I feel is a preferred method because number one, they're gonna back up their product. And number two, they put money back into our industry to help us all grow. So one little side note, I wanna let you know that Peggy Williams is an amazing mental mentor, educator, and encourager. And this was Diana Gladden and I sitting on Peggy's front porch in the middle of nowhere, Tennessee, <laughs> many years ago. And I wanna thank Peggy because of her encouragement and because of providing Diana and I a retreat to her home over eight years ago. That is why ballooncoach.com actually exists today to be able to even bring this free webinar to you. So Peggy, Thank you for being that inspiration, that encourager, that person who explained the industry better for me and let me know what was missing in our industry and allowed me to create the resources that we have today. So I'm so excited to finally have you on one of my webinar formats to be able to share your knowledge with the industry. So yay, Peggy. So Peggy, do you want me to go ahead and show some of the slides currently or do you wanna dig into the hands-on and then go back to the slides? Show a couple slides. All right. So Peggy has done these beautiful designs. Do you want to tell us a little bit about this beautiful red design? I do. I, do. I want to start out with some previous designs that were made. And, you know, I'm thrilled to bring you this, uh, uh, another outlet for doing outdoor decor and, and doing safe deliveries. But these are actually wonderful things to do for people's doors for any occasion. And this particular one, whoop, that particular one is a double door. So it's just double the profits, correct? And then we're going to slide to the next one, do the electric slide, right? And this is a bright one. You know, I'm bright and cheerful and wonderful with you when we and that were cool. Imagine yourself in the middle of a football field and can someone see it? It's curb appeal. It's so it catches the eye. 
So when we're doing things that go outside, I want to remind all of you to do bright, bold, beautiful, so it attracts the eye. And as you see, I have used mighty bright balloons to do that because they're just mighty bright. And when this hung on a door, it got attention by at the road and people were stopping to look at it. So that's the reason I would put this one in. And that's the one you saw, I guess, on your page, Joette, that started this wonderful opportunity to do this webinar. So the happy birthday balloons that are in the front, those are all Mighty Brights, is that correct? The balloons that are shown right now, the two large banner balloons, I call them, the happy birthday that's at the top and the bottom, are Mighty Bright. And I actually have that one here to show some of the concept with. And the one in that center, whoa, look at it. It's like a, a target, you know? And that is a Mighty Bright as well. Excellent. One of my favorites is, um, this was done on Mother's Day for some mothers, and it got so much attention, and then it was done for birthdays. As you see, it is a non-message balloon, and a non-message balloon can be used for to be Let me stress that non-message balloons are great, too. And that's this one that you see are two roses and um, a few more balloons, but none of them have a message. So it was used for Mother's Day. It was used for birthday. And basically, you can use this for kiss my foot. <laughs> yeah, and I know there's a little bit of her sound cutting out. You have to just um, bear with us. I'll repeat anything that gets missed. Peggy lives in an area that doesn't have super high speed <laughs> internet. So from time to time with the video, we may have a little bit of a glitch, but I'm, the main thing that she was talking about is how these are non message balloons. So they work out great because you can use them for any occasion. And so I put up on the screen, Peggy, the one of it also being on the brick house also just to show the difference of it, how it looked in a different environment. That was a there. Can you hear me now, Joanne? Do I need to speak louder? We're in a very good internet section. I mean, we've got internet on steroids in here. Cool. Just there were just a couple times where you glitched. It wasn't that we couldn't hear you. It just had a teeny bit of a delay. I need to slow down. <laughs> You're good. All right. I just and want so, to add that and, this particular wreath is another door. It is another occasion. And as you see, some of the balloons were omitted, different price points that you have to make for your customer. Love it. So um, did you want me to show them the picture of how you stored them, or do you want me to go to the pictures? I do. I do. Okay. This isn't the prettiest of pictures, but I will tell you, it's one of the most important pictures that you'll see. This is my actual work area back room, not front room. It's a little cleaner. This is the back room and it's a very tall ceiling. I bag those foil balloons when I'm finished and if I get them back or if I have the occasion to test, I store them. I never take the air out that's my preference. I don't want to damage the self-sealing valve by extracting air. So I put bags and a lot of my friends, I've got friends all over me. You actually take a click, click, high flow bagging them from the ceiling so they're out of your way. All right, so I'm gonna repeat what Peggy said there, is that um, she encourages people to store foils inflated rather than deflating the balloons because it just keeps them in better shape because of the valve. And then she's using a click click magnet on her high float bag to install it to the ceiling. So I also in my ceiling had um, steel beams in my warehouse. And I'm telling you, I had foil balloons hung from side to side covering my entire ceiling. 
um, because it was just so nice to be able to bring a balloon back from an event and being able to recycle. That is an amazing tip. Peggy, anything else about your storage area? Um, other than it looks nice, doesn't it? Cool. Do you want me to show the back of the designs and the side of them? No. Okay. So no I, I will stop that share for now so that we can have all eyes on you. The other thing that I do want to let you guys know is ENR Sales put together a great PDF for you guys that's going to be in the Units and Balloon Coach Community Facebook group. So you'll be able to see all of the products that she works with today. So I wanted to make sure, because I know people are always like, what was that item? And so I want to let you know, we've already got that taken care of so that you'll have it. So Peggy, it is your turn to talk. Got me? Do you hear me? I'm worried about the sound. What you'll happen is, it's not that we can't hear you no level wise. It's just every once in a while, it will have a teeny bit of a glitch. And so if that happens, I'll um, reiterate what you say. All right. So we're good. What I'm wondering, Peggy, is we might want to go ahead and turn off your other computer. Now we don't have your video at all. Hey guys, we did do a test run yesterday and yesterday everything worked perfect. And that's what sometimes happens when you're dealing with uh, online things is sometimes you have a glitch. All right, she's back on now. We see you. All right, Peggy, you're back on. Good, thank you. So. You know, we're, we're doing a lunch and learn today. And I took that really serious. So I'm coming to you from my daughter's kitchen to you. And I'm serving up a lot of good ideas today. So I want to start with, and this is what you're all waiting for, is how to actually put these beautiful three-dimensional wreaths. So the first steps that I want to, to bring to you is some of the most important steps, and that is preparing yourself to be ready. So I'm going to go see what's in the oven. Ah, oh, look. Ooh. We have some great things ready to serve today. And any of you that know me know I have a lot of drama. So I have to add a lot into this. And you know, one of the things that I want to do before I start is to thank Vitaly for being so fast in sending my orders. And also to Ian our sales, who can't be with us today because they're so busy getting out orders today. So I miss them, love them all, but we're gonna go on without them. You know, the show must go on. So to prepare your work, and what I'm gonna start with is we're going to look, I'm gonna answer the questions that you have asked me on some of these social media feeds after posting the many uh, door banners that I have put in. One of the main questions is how do you get it on the door? And that's pretty simple. These hooks are very inexpensive. Can you see them everyone? Joanne, is that good? All right. Just hold on for just a second because they were asking me if they can have a large screen of Peggy, but I have her as a large screen, so I'm kind of confused. So. Just let okay. me check one. I'm just going to check something real quick on my end to see if this will help. All right. So um, I keep it in myself muted while you're talking so that there's no, because see, when I talk, I go big. So now we're going to go and um, go back to you. And the question is, is that a Christmas wreath hook? 
Well, it is not what I would call a Christmas wreath hook. We buy these all year long because you can put any wreath that slides over the door. Um, if you're looking them up, you can try a Christmas wreath hook if it brings it up, but you should be able to purchase these at any time, anywhere, okay? The other thing that I want to show you that works really well, this is for wooden doors, uh, doors. Don't ever put a nail in a door, please. Don't ever damage someone's door. They're expensive to pay for. So this slides over the top and then hangs. This is a suction cup hook that's for glass, primarily for glass and my hand, look. All right, this does a very, very good job at hanging balloon banner wreaths because they're not as heavy as a heavy wooden wreath. But I have secured right here in this home probably a 25 pound wreath on one of these on glass. Make sure your glass is clean, okay? And these are from our friend Rowena at Clickmark. These are her heavy magnets. See them? And this is great for a metal door, right? And it has a ring, you take the ring off and put that on and that can be your door to secure your wreath or banner on your door. Okay, I think I've answered all of those questions. I hope if you happen to have any, we'll get to those. But I hope that that helps you with how to secure that wreath to the door. That was asked at least 10 times this last weekend. So these are my secrets, or this is what I do. Cool, and Peggy, one of the people had said that she is um, from England, and so in England, they don't put up wreaths year round, they only do them at Christmas time. So they'll have to search for those at the holidays or find somebody in the States who can send them some. <laughs> All right, go to Amazon and see what she can find. All right, and while we're talking about securing wreaths, I know I sent uh, some photos of that and we'll probably go over that later so you can see it. But there are times when I secure this on the inside of the door upside down. And Peggy, can, I, you, can you describe what this is? Can you see it? It's this suction cup hook. Can you see it better? We're zooming. Got it? Thank you, Daniel. That's perfect. Great. So this is the suction cup hook on the inside of the door. All right. On the inside of the door, you put it this way and tie ribbon here, wrap it up and over your door. And on the outside, you secure your wreath here with that ribbon. So it gives you that ribbon look wrapped around your door. You got it? Pretty cool. All right. They say amazing tip and thank you. And so for the person who is asking what it's called again, it's a suction cup hook. And then you're using the suction cup on the inside of your door to run a ribbon over the door to hold on to your banner. And the best part is Joette has photos of that to show later. Okay. Now I'm going to start preparing my wreath and preparing my wreath is one of the bonus tips that I will have to say, I believe in me. I believe in Peggy Williams. And I believe I can teach you how to heat seal a balloon, sure fire, as we say in the South, but it will work 
every time. Are you ready? I am going to use a heat sealer. See? And it has heat settings. And I want you to test yours, but between three and four usually works best. So we're not going to fry your balloon in any way. It's going to seal your balloon, okay? Now I'm gonna show you how to inflate that balloon. I'm gonna turn it around. You're not gonna see it anymore. Daniel's gonna show me again. And we are going to inflate this balloon and heat seal it. I have on my table a premium foil pro. Love me some foil pro. But you can use your hand pump as well. So I got from the oven, hot off the press, a great hand pump. And since I need one, does everybody need a smiley face? You know, we all can make the best of any situation, and today we're all going to be really happy, all right? We're going to inflate that balloon with my hand pump till it is so full. You see how full that is? And you see I'm gripping it? My thumb is turning blue because I'm gripping the air into the balloon. Next step, I'm going to walk the air off with my other hand and secure it to the bulb. So all of the air is in the bulb and none. And I'm gonna have Daniel, my candle man, my candle man, my cameraman come in and zoom in to show you just how flat it really is. Look guys, I mean no air. And I'm gripping it to the bowl, very full. He's going to transfer the camera back to my heat sealing arm. I'm going to put it into the arm of the heat sealer. And when I push down, as you see, can you see the red light? That means it has made contact. I know it's hard to see this, but you're going to press down. You're gonna hear contact and you're gonna slide. This is truly the heat sealing slide. And if I had music right now, we do the electric slide because this is the heat sealing slide that ensures, look at that seal. There is not a single line. There's not a cross line. There is a quarter of an inch line. And man, I'm telling you, you are not going to lose your seal. So Peggy, no. The, the trick was that you had the arm down and then slid it through, correct? That's right. That, do you, does anyone want me to do it again? Yes, one more time. I knew it. <laughs> so I'm prepared with two happy faces. Right? This is something that, you know, over the, the time, you know, it's just like being a baby. You know, we're, we, ne we don't know what we don't practice. We don't know when we're born how to run. We have to practice. Everybody has to practice. So if you do this the first time and you fail, so be it. You're going to. It's going to take you some practice. Do not ever give up. Give up. Nobody gives up. You know, they don't put baby in a corner 
And in Peggy's class, you don't give up. You keep on keeping on. Tight. Squeezing the air, that's important to get it tight. Walk that air up. You see, squeezing very tight. I think we'll do it this way, how's that? Is this better? Tight. Slip it in and you're gonna see that when I press down, you know, you don't go down and, and, and put 20 pounds of your weight on it. You press it down, keep it down, and slide it through. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Press down and slide. You see? See I'm sliding? I'm gonna do it again from this angle. Press down, slide. I bet that was a good one. What do you say about that one? Thank you, Peggy. I want everyone to be proficient experts at heat sealing nine inch and 14 inch and even four inch balloons. And the key to a star, I know some of you have asked me, how in the world do you do a star? How do you do one? Now, if you feel there is no pant, never could do nothing, but you just hold it sideways because a star is indeed very difficult to do. And it does have little ends on it. So you just maneuver it around, manipulation, and you too will be proficient. Got it? The question is, um, what was the setting you had your heat sealer on? It's between three and four for my heat sealer, but and I will say that in most cases, that will be good for you. Um, but I have seen heat sealers. This happens to be uh, a heat sealer from Premium Balloon Accessories. And I have tested these extensively. Actually, I worked with Premium Balloon Accessories for many years. And I have tested these and sometimes most of the time, it's between three and four that it will work. But when people use another heat sealer, there's some heat sealers that people use that actually seal bags, Joette. And what you have to do is test those settings with those particular heat sealers. One of the questions, Peggy, is for those people who are new in the industry and don't have a heat sealer yet, is there anything that you suggest for them to use until they have a heat sealer that they can get by with? Well, I will tell you, you know, I hate to admit that I came over with Christopher Columbus on the Santa Maria. I think I was on the Nina, and I didn't get to ride the Santa Maria. But when I started in this business, they really did not have heat sealers or uh, anything, and we didn't have self-sealing balloons. So this little cookie here used her, her curling iron. And I said it, and again, I can't tell you settings on that because I burned my ears with them. So you have to be very careful to touch them lightly and turn them. Um, get by with that. And if you're going to do just a few of them, by no means invest in a big piece of equipment until you want to use a lot of nine inch and 14 inch. But if you are going to, have the tools of the trade. I'm, I can't stress that enough. Um, once you know the tools of the trade, it's best to have them. A carpenter does not do a house with a plain hammer. Okay? Any more questions? Um, somebody was saying that you could also possibly use like a flat iron rather than a curling iron and just put it on a low setting. Sure. So you know, Kind of hair equipment, yes. Yep, we're good for you to move on to the next thing. I'm good. Moving on down the road, getting ready for my wreath. There's one more step because as you see, my wreath has jumbo balloons. They have 22 inch uh, Mighty Bright balloons and they have to be inflated 
and they have to be inflated correctly. So your door bender, your greeting, your yard art lasts the length of time it should. I can't, this is a big uh, tip of mine is know your balloons, okay? Um, I need a banner. I need one of my bandas to uh, get my polka dotted balloon, please, in the back right corner that's not on the right. Now, isn't this a good little banner? Thank you very much. Okay. All right. I'm, this is a flat mighty bright, and I'm going to use a inflator, either a hand pump or an inflator that enables you to decrease the speed, to lower the speed, so you do not damage the self-sealing valve that's in every balloon. If you use a regular inflator, cannot say this enough, use the correct inflator on low speed. It takes a while to inflate it, be patient, but make sure that you're not inflating too fast. It will singe the self-sealing valve. It will burn it, okay? I use, I have this, I use several machines, but this is the um, premium foil machine and I have the holes and I have the correct inflator. Uh, my cameraman's gonna zero in on it, I'm not gonna run it, but it says, for foil inflation. If you will see on the inside of this, it's got a lot of space filled in. So when you do inflate the balloon, it makes the air decrease and the speed be less and it will not damage the self-sealing valve. I'm not going to do it because I've pre-done every balloon for you. Do I have any questions on that part? Nope, That's everybody's it. doing good. The main question has been coming up is people who are coming in late because we now have over 60 people with us on live from around the world, which is exciting. Um, they're just asking if there's going to be a replay. So anybody who's not seeing the chat boxes, yes, I am recording this and it will be in the Loom Coach community on Facebook and I'll be putting it up as a unit where you'll have this video, her PDF, and some of the pictures that she shared today on the slideshow. So you can go to Balloon Coach Community if you're not a member yet and ask to join that Facebook group. And then in the unit, all this information will be there together for you in one place. And you are very welcome. So we're good, Peggy. All right, I just, I have to ask one question. Is my second husband on my mother's side's first cousin watching? <laughs> Terry, are you there? He is. All right. He promised me he would be on my front row because I don't know how many years he's, he's a bit older than I am, I'm sure. But he has been on the front row of my class every single time I teach. So, heart to you, buddy. And he said, yes, I think he's here. <laughs> Good. Good. All right. So, we've inflated all of our balloons. And um, the next step to do this is to start with the backing of our, I'm going to take some of these trays and put them back in the oven. How's that sound? So we can cook up a little um, information later. All right, we're going to inflate or bring out this. This is your life, all right? But this is how you actually are going to build your balloons for your door banner, for your whatever you want to use them for. Don't just think door banner. Take these ideas and run with them in other ways. But I start with magic arch. Magic arch, arch has already been inflated. Am I going too fast? 
Can you, um, Peggy, can you hold it up for a second flat so the people who've never worked with them before can see what they look like? Oh, sure. <laughs> Got it? Yep. yep, you're good. Perfect. Thank you. All right. And if um, Daniel will follow me to the wreath I already have made, I think I can clarify a lot of things for you. Right here, this particular wreath. As you see, started with blue magic arch. I'm going to lower this so you can actually see the stand that I use when I do work that I need to see dimension. I don't want to see it flat. So I, I did not build it. My sweet husband built it. But this is just a um, hole with some Holds hooked on, right? How many people use conduit all the time? Conduit and UVC and whatever you need to use. All right, got it? And then you have a little hook at the top. So now, I can work on a wreath and see what I'm doing. Is that a good tip for you? It's a great tip, Peggy. And one of the questions that came up is when you're inflating your magic arch balloons, how full do you inflate it? Like I know a lot of times I talk to people about having a squish test so that if it's outdoors that you're able to still squish it. How do you determine how full you're gonna blow your balloons up? Good question. I determine by, I guess you can call it the squish test, but what I do, Joette, is I try to never inflate the balloon when I'm going to need it. I forgot to cover that, but I like to inflate balloons at least a couple of days early. And I take those balloons, if I'm inflating them inside, I will take them outside to see how it expands. And you can safely see that it's full, when you touch, but you can still do a little squish. Is that helpful? That's wonderful. And the other question was, are those polka dots on the other magic arch, um, are they printed or is that a special Peggy trick? That is a special Peggy trick that I guess I'm going to cook up for you again. So the garage sale stickers. <laughs> <laughs> Do you love it? Uh, you can get these color coding labels. As you say, if you have garage sales, you always go to the office, the fly store, and you say, what can I use all that cool stuff for? I have bought these, and I can make polka dots where nobody else has polka dots, all right? I simply use this. And the other secret is for my stand. So it secures my pole still so it doesn't turn when I'm working on it. I use a set screw in my nipple. And this is the tool that I use to um, open the set screw and close the set screw. This is a Alan Rich. No. Yeah. Isn't? Yeah. Yeah. See, I don't know what it is, <laughs> but it's got bling on it. <laughs> All right. So we're going to get started on the things it's going to take to make this great. This guy's going to help me because we're going to use U blue dashes and you blue dashes go everywhere. So you actually feed this guy with all of the trash. 
He's my trash keeper. All right. Um, Vanna, on the right, can you get this heat sealer on for me? All right. And we're going to, I set my magic arch different. And everybody saw this read. And everybody saw that I set it up just like this. On our reach we're making today, because I want it a little longer, and because of the balloons that I'm going to use, I am going to set this up with, you know, I've cheated. I put a top on here. The top, and you see how I'm setting it up? Instead of squaring it off, I'm going to put one of the bowls on top, one on the bottom, and one on each side. Okay? And the next magic arch. I'm going to secure it just like this. Any questions? All right, so what I love is that she's got one on an angle. So instead of it being basically a square, it's more like a diamond. That's so right. So a diamond meeting up with the square. Okay. And I'm going to secure it. I will tell you guys, U Glue is a fabulous product, and I've done many banners. They lasted a long time, and it's very difficult to get them apart. So, what I'm going to use is U Glue dashes, and I'm going to angle it here. Baby's not coming apart. I'm going to, at this point, I'm going to do this one flat for you so you can see. But if you wanted to hang it up on a stand so you can look at it and design it, the next step, I would put my hanger, how you're going to hang it on the hook, next. And I'm going to use Click Clicks Hang Tabs. See top tab. Now the secret to hang tabs, I cut it in half. I need a Vanna to come hold this for me, please. Okay. I don't think I need to, but for the video, every time I do something live, things just explode, all right? So I'm gonna have double insurance when I hang this baby, okay? That is how I secure it to the door, all right? I take ribbon. You see my scissors? And there is your door hanger. Got it? Okay. All right. Let's 
start with the bottom. Hey, Peggy, I'm just jumping in for a second because somebody's like, because it's clear, it's probably hard to see. And yes, hang tabs are clear, so it's wonderful. They'll disappear. And you just simply take the length of the hang tab and cut it in half so that the circle part where you're able to thread the ribbon through, that that goes on to the balloon first to be your hang point. And then she took the other part, the other half of the hang tab as a backup piece to help it stay um, secured so that when there's that force of it hanging that it's not gonna just pull off your balloon. So it's kind of similar to what people call H taping, um, which I talk a lot about in my Balloon Boss Mastermind program. And in my course and the training is just a lot of times when you tape anything, you wanna do that backup of kind of that H tape concept to help keep it secure. Okay, Vanna, I need my um, candle balloon, please. All right, we're going to start with a tall candle. Can you see this big guy? I adore this balloon. I love this balloon. This balloon has tried and true and we've been tested all over. I have tested this in a yard. I've tested it in a hot shop. I have, uh, it lasted nine days in a yard. So this is one of my favorites. You know, Peggy has a lot of favorites to do, but this is one of my favorites. And I'm going to take, again, two blue. You blue dashes are sometimes hard, or you blue strips, whatever you choose to use. And I'm going to be using both of them, are sometimes hard to get off. So you just have to get used to doing it. And I'm going to secure my first candle. Okay. And followed by the bottom. Stick one on. Do a little rub. And pull off. Give it time to settle. You'll hear a little popping going on but it will settle and be in place. All right, the next one, should I turn it this way? I'm, I'm just, it's hard to do in a little space, but I need birthday wishes for you, Vanna, in the back. Okay. And this is where I can let you know that every balloon before you start, Every single balloon has been taped, the tail has been taped down with some good tape. Okay, that's all. All right? And to get the dimension that you really need from a balloon, instead of putting everything flat to our magic arch, this is one of the keys to um, dimensional work, manip manipulating your balloon. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna set this balloon upright. Another U glue. And you see how it's gonna go in? It is not flat. Okay. In comparison, this is what it would look like flat. Follow? Okay. So now we've got a little dimension going on. While we're at the top, Vanna, I need a star, a large star, red star. A large red star. That has been taped. <laughs> I did some not taped to show you. She's doing a great job. <laughs> All right. And we're going to I'm going to turn it around. But you see how this is sitting up? We're going to secure that in place with a star. Okay? Very easily done. We're going to take a U glue dash or strip. In this case, I cut my strips. See where it's going to go? Okay. 
Do a little push. Do a little push. Okay. And we're going to see where that balloon lies on it. Look, stick one on. Did you see how? Did you see how easy that was? Guys, look how easy this is. Right? And Vanna, while we're on top, could you please get me, um, Vanna Jr., if you will please get me a green star now. I wish y'all could clap for them. They're doing such a good job. All right. Let's put a star here. So we're going to get a usually dash out. Don't find that little pole. You don't have a lot ever have trouble trying to find a pole. Wow. There you go. He's on. And he's off. I told you when you do a video, it never works. All right, let's see where it's going to go. And then we're going to put it on. Let's turn this baby around. You can kind of feel where it's going to touch, and that's where you secure. Got it? Okay. So far, so good, right? Any questions? I need another big candle, Vanna's. So, and I, yes, ma'am. A couple of questions came up of like, have you had any experiments with how long those U glue dashes will hold up if it's outside with a lot of wind on a really windy day? I have. And let me tell you, that pink wreath that you saw on my door went from my door to my daughter's door and the little entrepreneur then sold it to another door and that wreath still had you glue balloons stuck to it when the person took it down so does that tell you how it lasts do I hear an amen amen and amen. you got you got virtual <laughs> claps for your vanna what? And you got virtual claps. People put the hand clap up for your Vanna. Oh, yay. <laughs> yay, Vanna. All right. And we're going to take this candle. And I think because I want this longer, we're going to put it down a little further, okay? Terry, don't you like to sell bigger things than little things? Can I hear an amen on that? You know, it's called perceived value, right? So let's put this guy down here. And if this isn't totally straight, give me a break, okay? Is Cody watching this? I know he was on earlier. I'm not sure if he's still on or not. Okay, he had a lot of work to do. He sent you a text. He said, good luck. He said, he sent a text. I gotta go make some money, man. All right. So we got our bottom candle. We're gonna- Oh, he's, he is still on. He is. Cody, give me a break if this isn't straight, okay, man? I will tell you, Cody Williams is the king of organics. All right, the king of organics. Um, I'm gonna get a star. And you see how I'm going to put that star in here to give it a little dimension, okay? Um, let me turn it around and show you. Y'all 
all this big here. I think I'll come around. Can you still see me if I come around? Yeah, we can see you. You really don't need to see me. You do need to see this beautiful shirt that Belinda Barrier gave me, Bo. Don't you love it? I love balloons. I heart balloons. Great company. And I, I am proud to wear it. And if anyone wants to know how long her shirts last, this is five years old. Wow, I Heart Balloons Belinda Barrier has wonderful products for you. Thank you for the shout out. <laughs> and Terry is saying that you look wonderful, Miss Peggy. Thank you. How do y'all like my COVID hair? <laughs> Your COVID hair, I love it. Oh, and Tabitha is saying that she is seeing her new baby announcement wreaths as you're making this. That's her, oh. what she's planning. <laughs> I want you to make them to do everything. You know, I want baby wreaths. I want to see Fourth of July wreaths. I want to see everything. Okay, so let's just nudge this one in quickly. I'm taking too long, aren't I, Joanne? Okay, now you see it coming, you're seeing it coming to life here. It looks wonderful, Peggy, and I love how you showed us how you're doing the 3D depths and how you're using the different balloons and the different sizes to help prop it up. That's awesome. Well, I will tell you, this is, this is eclectic. This is my term for organic, I guess, is eclectic. So we're going to have to make sure that, um, you know, that, that Cody approves of this you know, that it is truly organic and eclectic, okay? Now I'm gonna put one more balloon on and that's going to be my happy birthday wishes if my bandits will get me that balloon. And then I'll put the finishing touches. Thank you, my dear, you're welcome. All right, and if you will see, oh, I wish you could see this, this kitchen. We're actually feeding our cameraman our cameraman is my grandson, and he had football practice, came in and, and did a quick bath, and here he is. So um, I'm gonna come back around for the depth. And you see this space, guys, do you see it? Now at this point, if one of my bandits will go around and get me a smiley face, nine inch, that's great. And again, depth perception. Okay. I am a floral designer as well. For those of you who know me, I am a floral designer too. And with flowers, if you do short stems and tall stems and feed them together, you get that depth, or you get what I was taught probably a long time ago, I'm not even mentioning it, a woman named Miss Orr, when we would do arrangements that were flat. Now I want you to remember this. Arrangements that are flat are not appealing. She said, always give someone a bosom. Bosoms are appealing. And when you have a bosom on your balloon wreath, it gives it the depth perception. So can y'all can y'all remember the bosom of a floral or a balloon arrangement? I'm gonna put this guy in here. And again, he's not gonna go flat. He's gonna sit on that candle. You see how he put on there? You can look at the wreath. And I'm going to take a few more stickers and I'm going to make sure that he's on well. And then when you finish that part, Daniel, if you can step back just a little bit and let us see the side as it lays there on the, um, the counter, that'd be great. Does he have it, Joette? 
Is that where you want the camera? Yes. Good. So you see the depth? You see the bosom, right? And to finish this guy, and it's like floral 101, is one to the top, carry it to the bottom, okay? Your eye has to flow successfully through your arrangement. So we have at the top our star. So if Vanna Jr. will come around and get me the red star, Okay, thank you. And Vanda Jr. is making sure that this end is taped up, so she's a very thorough little All right, we're going to put this at the bottom, and I'm not putting it flat, do you see that? I'm just putting it in toward the center. You see, this is the center. You see, the center point of this magic arch tells you where it's going to hang in the center of your door. So I'm going to slide this in right here, and then I'm going to know where to put, where it's going to touch, so I can put my stickies, okay? It's hard to see upside down, Joette. I know, if, Peggy, we just wanted to double check. If you could tell us again what it was about making sure that your eye will follow, how you make that line to make sure that they follow the line. Sure. And, and I'm really not through with the line and the follow. Um, when you're doing uh, an arrangement, come up to me. When you're doing any type of arrangement, that can be a balloon decay, it can be whatever you're doing, it can be yard art, but make it comfortable for your customer to view it, to look at it. To make it appealing is to make it comfortable to where your eye follows through the design. When I started this design, I have a star on top. Therefore, I'm going to hang a star at the bottom and a star through the middle so your eye follows through. I'm not finished with your eye yet because I'm going to also take, now that I have this, hopefully in the center of the arrangement, doing this upside down, we're going to add the final touches and then we can show you exactly I'm feeling while I'm doing. And I didn't hit it, but it's okay. All right, so now I'm going to, there it is. I didn't feel it. Thank you, cameraman. How about that? Give him a hand, let's give him a hand, okay? All right, hey, you've got to train him young because all my kids can tie a balloon and they can work, they can inflate, and they can run errands. And now I have bananas and cameramen too. So teach them in the ways of the world. But what I'm going to do is, Joette, if we can, um, uh, we're gonna hold this up. Well, we can't, I gotta put a couple more balloons and then I'll hold it up. I just have to be able to see them. Didn't know this was gonna be so hard, but I need a smiley face banner and I need another green star. And we'll just put them on quick. While you're again, putting, while you're putting it together, Peggy, if you yes. can share the tip you and I talked about the other day, Cody was asking what your tip is to help make sure they have a little bit of extra weight at the bottom so that they don't. I have will. You talk about a good tip. I think my smile is a little crooked. Does anybody have a crooked smile? All right, you're gonna have a little bit of a crooked smile. What I'm doing with the green is you stain the green at the top, all right? So we're going to put a green on the bottom, through the middle, and then I'm going to share that tip. Cody, you want to hear that tip? You already know it, I'm sure. He pretty much knows everything, right? <laughs> um, 
I'm going to walk over here. My daughter's saying, oh my gosh, don't show my dirty kitchen. She's been on a 48 hour shift of work. And I just see how I slashed a little green. Okay. He's going to follow it around. Cameraman will show you while I grab another green balloon. Cody says he knows everything after today, after your class. Oh, smooches. <laughs> Look, don't you think a little one right there? I do. You know, sometimes you just have to, if this was hung up, you know, like I showed you how I hang roost, you can get a better eye. And the closing tip, I think I have enough green. I'm going to hold it up. But when you place this on the door, my tip to you is to add weight to the bottom of this wreath because it is so extremely light. And if you are not, if your customer does not have a covered porch, many times you have the hip or, and which will shade this. And that's why it's so nice to do door decor or door banners but you can uh, add weight to the bottom with penny weights that you buy from the hardware store, circle weights, or you could put a premium balloon accessory weight to the bottom. These are 90 grams, and I would just simply take this to the bottom of this balloon, okay, to give it weight. Cameraman's spinning, isn't he? Does that answer that question, Joette? Yes, and just to repeat, it's that you can go to like the um, hardware store and purchase penny weights or the premium balloon accessories flat weights. They come in different shapes. She had shown you the star. That can be taped to the back of it and it gives you that extra weight so that it can help with the balloons being so light that they're not going to blow around as much in the wind um, and just stay flat to the door. A uh, question came in saying, due to your floral skills, do you ever add fresh flowers to any of your balloon designs? <laughs> I do. However, in the heat and outside, you can do water picks, but I do not suggest it sit with, so with hot sun. And the easiest thing to take outside would probably be a, a, a daisy or something like that. I just wouldn't do it outside. I'm, I just, now inside, absolutely. I'm gonna finish this because I'm going over and I wanna get your questions, but I've gotta add one more piece. I'm gonna have Vanna hold this up and don't worry, we'll get it to where you can see it. And my other tip to you is I always do, my, my smile needs to be up a little higher. Um, my other tip to you is to always give them a coordinating piece. And because I don't have a warehouse at my disposal, I ran out of candles. So why not have a beer on me, okay? A good old glass of beer. And this is what I'm gonna add to this. So drinks are to you, but to, this is air inflated. And look guys, I use that premium balloon weight on the bottom of many of my air filled designs. And I want you to watch. It's gonna stay. And it's gonna stay really well. Now what I will do, I know many of you want to see this wreath. I will put this on a black door. I will get a photo and I will send that to you, Joette. Is that a deal? That is a deal. That would be wonderful to have those photos. And what I'm going to do guys is for those of you who aren't used to it now in Facebook groups, I have balloon coach community. She's drinking her beer. She's celebrating her lunch and balloon coach community. There are units. And in that unit section, I will put the replay of this, the video of this. I'll put the photos that she's given me and the PDF of the actual products that she used today. So it's easy for you to order them. 
So I'll put all that together in the additional photos that she sends me so that you'll have it all in one place. You'll just need to go to Balloon Coach Community if you haven't joined that Facebook group and ask to join and answer the three little questions that are in there. And then you will go to units and you'll look for the one that says Balloon Door Wreath. And you'll have all that information. Joy, are we good? Um, we do have a couple of comments. One of the comments was that you could literally do anything with this and that it would be amazing at hospitals for birth announcements and congratulations. And, um, you know, for anybody who's stuck in a hospital over their birthday or a holiday. And I do want to throw out a year ago, my husband was in the hospital over Christmas. And that was a very unique experience for me after years of always having it as a family day to spend Christmas at the hospital and realizing how many people are at the hospital during Christmas. I would totally encourage people to promote doing things like this because that would be so festive, not only for the patient, but also for the staff and everything during the holidays. Um, All right, can I, can I add one big one? Yes. All right, I have done so many door rings and they've taken different forms. They've, they've been upgraded, they've been changed. They have been tossed and turned and done, but Baby wreaths on a door in a hospital are very easy to do because they're so lightweight. They don't have to be ginormous. Take one magic arch, one, and build your backdrop, and it will secure to the door with no problem. Also, I don't know what the rules will be for nursing homes and assisted living, but Joanne, I have taken complete facilities and made wreaths for every door. And I got the biggest blessing from seeing all of the residents enjoy that part of it. Um, it's an extreme blessing for me to do things like that. Um, that's one thing I did want to add. Did you see my magic wand? That could be the next webinar, Joanna. Yes, that would be great. So we have a couple of questions for you, Miss Peggy. And Good, I love them. Right. So, okay, so a couple of things, guys, is number one, the feed um, with the chats talking about all the ways that you can use these. And yes, in my Balloon Boss Mastermind program, we're going to be talking more about the ways that you can sell this, but I want to make sure you guys heard about the nursing homes. I used to be an activities director at a nursing home, and I know that right now with the last two months with them not being able to have people has been devastating. So I would highly encourage you, I used to be an activities director, I'd encourage you to reach out to the activities directors at every single nursing home and assisted living by you and tell them that you have this wonderful foil design that you can put together, find out what their current rules are. I know we actually did a balloon delivery early on in COVID to a nursing home for helium latex balloons because they wanted something to cheer their customers. So I encourage you to reach out to those people and see what they want. And even if they can't do it for every single person, they could do it for main areas. The other thing is that they may put it out to their family members to be able to purchase from you. And then individual families would have you take them. It depends on your area because everybody has different rules and regulations. But I know a lot of those nursing homes are really needing something to cheer them up. Um, Peggy, they were asking for us to show the slide about how you do the ribbon over the hook, and I have that set up for them, but I want to see if there's something you want to show us on camera before I go to there, because the other question was you had talked about how to make this um, door hanger into a party pole. Okay. To uh, actually take anything that you're doing with Magic Arch and using your Magic Arch as a palette. I'm going to hold this up. Woo! I'm serving up lunch here, you know. Your conduit, can you see where the conduit hole? Well, this one, we're going to have to have a break, okay? Let's take the other one. I did this one back uh, to long, but if you take, let me get it. Now do you see the pole can be taped right here, you see it? And 
I would use half inch conduit. I would put a piece of rebar, pound it into the ground, and I would take my conduit pole and slip it right over the rebar. My trick to this is to use a little bit taller piece of rebar that comes up further so it will stabilize this arrangement. And take the holy you know what out of it. All right, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna fix that foil to your conduit and put it in the ground. And for those of you who are in my Balloon Boss Mastermind program, the video that I did on how to H tape a 260 to a back of a foil, this would be one of those perfect ways to do that so that you're not having to tape your pole directly to the balloon. You're actually H taping 260 to the back of the magic arch and then tying it to your conduit and it makes it a little bit more secure. I've been doing tests with that outdoors and that's been really helpful. So there's multiple ways that you can affix that, but it's that you're just gonna put that conduit behind it to support it. So I love that tip to um, Peggy. Thank you so much for showing that. And I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen so people can um, see this other tip. I'm just making sure I don't lose any questions real quick. People are saying you're, genu um, you're a genius and they appreciate all your adorable helpers help today. Um, and so for the over the door hanger, if you're using a suction cup, um, Peggy, are you able to see that? I'm going to. Okay. And if you don't, it's okay. Um, so what she did is she put the, I, I got it. Okay. I got it. All right. If you'll look to the one, um, to the left. All right. That is outside. That is an outside glass door. And you see the little silver hook is hooking upward. So you can actually put the wreath on it. Now, on the inside, this one to my right, it could be your left, but the one on the right that you'll see and at the top part of the glass, that suction cup is turned the other way. And ribbon is tied onto that hook and then pulled up around the outside of the door so ribbon will drop down to the middle of the door. Is that explained well enough? I believe so. So with the one on the right hand side, with the way that hook is on the inside of the door, the hook is upside down. So that way your ribbon attaches to it, goes over the door and outside to secure it. And Absolutely. And Kim said, yes, she gets it. So that's I see. good. Excellent. So Miss Peggy, any other tips you want to give or you want me to go through the end of my presentation? One more. And that is, um, again, I can't say enough good about Mighty Bright Balloons and their testing I have done. I've uh, been testing these for about two and a half weeks. And I can safely say that they, I don't have 99 degree weather. I've had 85 at the hottest, but I've kept them inflated in my workroom as well. They have been a tremendous asset as far as, as lasting. Latex is great, but latex will go down. If you give your customer Mighty Brights, foil balloons, tested, tried and true, you will have a longer last out of your work and you will please more customers with balloons that will last. That's one, one yes. question that was asked. I've had two other questions. One is on pricing. If you have any tips on how to price these. And then the other one was, do you have extra tape that you give to the customer in case anything comes apart? Good questions. Um, Pricing, what I can tell you to do and what I tell everybody to do is um, I've been talking a lot I, about foil balloons. I, I have done a extensive amounts of retail work and I've used a lot of foil balloons. So um, what I suggest to you when you're setting up your, your work rooms is to have every balloon price that you buy. And what I'm saying is, how much is an 18 inch balloon if you use it? How much do you sell an 18 inch balloon for? That's your dollar amount there. And you mark it as such. 
So if you charge $5 for that and you have charged $5 or $7 or $10, you mark that as such and keep that in your mind. Shapes, you mark the price of a single balloon. You mark everything. And when you add it up on your tally, you're gonna come up with a number, correct? And that's when you then factor in your overhead and the actual labor. I'm not talking about delivering, okay? And that is a single piece of work going to a specific home. Does that help anyone? Yeah. And for those of you who struggle with pricing, tonight actually on my Go master, yeah. yeah. So the, one of the things that I always say with pricing is as Peggy said, know what you normally get. So if you normally get $5 for an 18 inch and $25 for a specialty balloon, then you're gonna put those numbers together and you may be like, oh my gosh, it's $250. Well, you know what? It might be worth 325 because of the time involved in putting it together. Don't let the numbers scare you. If you would sell the balloon individually for a certain price, then you wanna get at least that when you're putting it together because now it's taking your artistic time to make that beautiful arrangement for your client. So um, I appreciate that tip, Peggy, of how you put it down as knowing the cost per balloon and then adding it together and then all the other overhead that goes with it. And then what about extra tape? Do you ever feel like you need to leave extra tape for your client? Do you know, Joad, I don't because I am so secure in my work. And when I actually take that and put it on the door, don't think I don't have tape in my pockets. And don't think I don't have extra U glue handy. And you have your toolkit in your car full of an extra balloon in case one pops getting up to the door. You have your extra pieces with you. So I do not leave that for the customer because I don't want them thinking it's gonna fall apart either. I'm gonna make sure that that son of a gun is gonna stay on that door. And when I leave it on the door, it's going to be something beautiful that they're proud of, guys. And when you're selling these, be sure to know that you don't have to make these gigantic wreaths. You can make wreaths starting at say, whatever price and make three different price levels. You make one small one, you make medium, and you make a, oh my God, wreath, okay? Miss Jones, Miss Jones. All right, I think I've got it. What do you think? Do I have any more questions? And the other question was, for wood doors, does the U dot tape work? U dot, none. I mean, you're not going to U dot anything to the door. You're going to hang it on the door. I guess I heard that wrong. U glue works when you're building your arrangement on your magic arch. U glue works from balloon to balloon, but do not put it on the door. Okay, so let me just repeat this as loud and clear as I possibly can. <laughs> Peggy said, tape is wonderful from balloon to balloon but is not to go on to your client's door or wall or any other surface, okay? I talk about this a lot of times because the last thing you want to do is pay to repaint somebody's door, somebody's wall, somebody's house. So adhesives go on your balloons, not on your client's items. <laughs> Absolutely, I have paid for a wall before. <laughs> All right. Um, so, um, I was just asked, where do you get tape from? So right here, E and R sales is who Peggy is with E R sales.com. And so this PDF of the items that she used today in the class are going to be up in balloon coach community on Facebook. So you can get the PDF and you'll get the replay of today. If you came in later, missed part of it. The other question somebody had, Peggy, was does ENR sales sell the inflator that you were using today? Yes, it's we do. Uh, I think uh, Terry bought one from us recently. Ask our uh, customer service and they will get you the price and information. We do not have it on our website, but we do sell them. 
call and ask, please. So guys, if you absolutely loved Peggy's uh, message today, I would love for you to give her some love in Balloon Coach community and say thank you, Peggy and Ian, our sales for doing that. Terry is saying best investment was that foil plater. And if you guys have any questions, you can type them up. Peggy says she can hang out a little bit. And I'm gonna go ahead and just give you a little bit of information to help you take the next step in your business. Peggy, thank you so much for being on today. And right now we don't have a camera of you in case you were wanting us to see your smiling face. We're currently not seeing you. What do I have to do, turn it around? Um, I just, I'm just seeing a black thing. I'm not, it's just you need to turn your video on. There we go. Now I can see your space. They were asking if they could see the suction cook that not the right, not the one that I didn't have the picture of, but that other suction cup that you were showing that you can put onto a wall or a door. If you guys still happen to have that from the beginning, if not, they can watch the replay and see the video of it. Um, let me look in the oven. Okay, thanks. So guys, I wanna let you know, I'm Joette with ballooncoach.com and I help balloon professionals grow their thriving balloon business. From putting on free webinars like this to putting on paid webinars like tonight with my Balloon Boss Mastermind at 9 p.m. Eastern. Well, we're gonna be talking with a person who's an accountant and an MBA <laughs> who has been a consultant with Belinda Barrier at Balloon Construction Company in Jacksonville. She's gonna to talk to you about overhead, how to figure out your pricing and to help you become more profitable <laughs> and confident in your pricing. So if you would like extra help in growing your business, you can always email me, joette, J-O-E-T-T-E, -T -T -E, at ballooncoach.com, or I went ahead and left the doors open. I was supposed to close them at midnight for my new Balloon Boss Pro course. Um, it's small increments of training. I went ahead and left it open because a couple people messaged me this morning saying, please let me buy because I didn't see your email yesterday. So go to balloonbosspro.com and you can check out my course, my mastermind program, or our Balloon Boss Pro Summit. Those resources are there to help you grow and thrive. We also have our Balloon Coach Community Facebook group that can help you in growing your business. Um, and now, Peggy, if you've got that piece of thing in your cameraman can. I, I do. And, and I want to add, while you're looking at this and my bright, smiling face, we are um, uploading a video that I just completed last week on how to make a candy gift centerpiece that you can sell with these banners to upgrade that your sale, make more money and sell other items. So if you'll go to our uh, Facebook page, it will be on today. Here's the hook, can you see the hook? I'm um, seeing Daniel. Uh, it, my camera's glitched on my screen. We'll turn it around. Maybe. Is that, do you see now I see Peggy. Hi. It had a glitch. All right, can you see it? Yes. Does he need to come in on it? Got it? Okay. Got a First. question? Yay. Well, Peggy, people are saying they absolutely love your door hangers. They love these wreaths. It's been super informative. They really help um, them figure everything out. They love, um, there's also, Terry suggesting that they also make lockdown suction cups that I know that you can get at local hardware stores or online on Amazon, and those are handy also. Um, let's see that Brenda's saying, love you, Peggy. You have a wonderful cast and crew helping you today. Thank you so much. <laughs> I do. Yes, I'm just double checking to scan. And guys, if, if by chance I missed any of your questions, if you go to Facebook to Balloon Coach Community, I'll be glad to answer those for you. And what I'm going to do is just throw this out there for you guys. If anybody has any other questions, feel free to put them in the chat box. And um, if you're one of those people that you're still new to the industry and you want to know more about how to make party poles and yard poles, I have all of that information in my Balloon Boss Mastermind program and it's getting uploaded into my Balloon Boss Pro program. The difference is the course you pay once and it's a lifetime thing that you have access to. There's no interaction with me, it's just training. Where my Balloon Boss Mastermind, it's interactive and allows you to work on increasing your confidence, ask questions anytime, 
and keep you moving forward. Peggy, thank you so much for sharing your information today. Uh, you are a wealth of knowledge in our industry. You inspire so many, and I cannot wait to see people doing this. So here's what I'm gonna throw out to you guys. When you make and sell these designs, I want you to go into Balloon Coach Community on Facebook. Yes. I want you to post the picture, and I want you to shout out and say, thank you, Peggy, for your awesome webinar on door wreaths. I was able to sell this to my client by showing them a picture and it inspired me to go after this client because in Balloon Coach Community, by us sharing our successes on how we take training, put it into action, and what we do, it helps inspire our industry and it helps our industry to continue to grow stronger. So that's why I have that Facebook group is for us to encourage each other and to share what's working. And so when you put up a picture in there, tell them like, yes, yeah, shout out to Peggy. Thank you for this tip and idea. And then this is who I approached and how I sold it. And then that inspires other people. And the more success we have, the more the manufacturer manufacturers make us the balloons that we need. And the more we can all work together to continue to grow. So I wanted to just throw that out there because I know sometimes people are hesitant to post in a Facebook group. And when you do share that kind of success with others, it helps everybody out. And uh, Risha's saying, we all grow together. Exactly, a rising tide lifts all ships. And in the middle of this crazy storm of social distancing, our industry is booming for the people who are being able to work. And if you're currently still in an area that's not able to do designs, I'm letting you know right now, you want to make balloons like this in your home, you want to take pictures of it on your door or a neighbor's door. You want to get this idea out on social media now to your client base so that as soon as you're allowed to do deliveries, that you're ready to hit the ground running, figure out your pricing and go for it. I know so many people are scared of latex balloons outdoors in the sun and the heat with the summertime. So this was perfect timing with Peggy to show us how we can do designs that go to a front door that possibly are already shaded by the porch or were items that could go and be put inside the people's houses and they could put it on the inside of their door if they wanted to be cheery there and not have it outside. So, go ahead, Peg. Great, I just have to make an acknowledgement. The queen of high flow is watching Marjorie and I have to send biggest kisses to her. Yay, Marjorie with High Float. Anybody who's new to the industry and doesn't know what High Float is, come ask me in Balloon Coach community and we'll hook you up about how to make your latex balloons last a long time with helium and extend their float time to make them be like magic. Yay, there you go. Well, I think I've spent so much time. We're way over and I do apologize for that. I do get long-winded. And, but I've enjoyed today immensely. I love to teach, I love to design, and I especially love our industry and I have a passion for all of you. I'm always here for, for you with any questions, Joa. And to that, I'm going to close and you know, send kisses and hugs to everyone. Please be safe and keep selling. I love it. Be safe and keep selling selling. That is awesome. <laughs> all right, Ms. Peggy, thank you so much for all of your help. And again, any questions, go to joette at ballooncoach.com. And I can't wait to see what you've created in Balloon Coach community from the wonderful information that Peggy has shared today.